Dear friends, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to Congregation of God's People on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to Rutgers Presbyterian Church, Church of Open Commensality, which means that our embrace is open to everyone, regardless of your age, regardless of your race, regardless of your gender or orientation, you are welcomed here. This is the safe space to worship God. In our worship, when we come to time of intercessions, prayers uh, of intercessions, I will be coming with a microphone to you, those who are here in person, uh, and you can bring your joys and concerns to us, and our response will be depending uh, on the theme, Lord or God in thanksgiving and response is hear our prayers, or Lord in your mercy and response is the same. Uh, for those who are online, and there is probably more people online today than here in the sanctuary, uh, the option is to uh, write a message on uh, uh, Zoom. Uh, so share your message on Zoom, and we will, uh, I will share it with the rest of the congregation for you. That takes care of our announcements here, and uh, we proceed with uh, apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now please join me in our opening prayer. Holy One, you cradle each of us with remarkable hope. You wrap each of us in a deep, mysterious love. You ce celebrate each of us for the original beauty we possess. May we now celebrate these your blessings with open spirits and grateful hearts. Amen.
Now let us be in confession. Dear God, for times when we have viewed our planet as a provider of cheap, endless resources, forgive. For the times when we treated other creatures as mere objects, forgive. For times when we selfishly thought that you care only about us, us and us humans, forgive. For times when we fretted about divine Armageddon while being the real culprits instigating it ourselves, forgive. For times when we have cared more about our comfort than our planet's well-being, forgive. And now, if you are able, please stand for the words of assurance. Planet Earth is our sanctuary home. We celebrate, we celebrate Earth, Earth as our, our home and, and continue, continue to live sustained, sustained only by God's, God's forgiveness. forgiveness. of encouragement and forgiveness from God. Let us now turn to one another with greeting of peace. Peace of Christ peace. with you. Peace, 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 Marty. Peace, 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 Peace to you, Joy, Ethel. Peace, Ethel. Peace. Peace. Feeling better. I hope you're feeling. I know. I know. Peace to everybody. Peace to you too, my friend. Of including those who are worshiping with us online, at least those who are on Zoom. We don't have that kind of privilege with those who are on the live stream because they are very incognito until they decide to let uh, themselves known. Uh, but now we continue with our children message and we start with a jingle. Today, I want to talk to you, uh, children maybe at home or li on live stream. There were some in the Sunday school, even though it was not an easy task for them to join the Sunday school earlier. But uh, maybe they are there on live stream. I want to talk to you today about my big hobby or love, and that is snapping pictures of birds. And I can ask Peter to show us the first picture. Yes, this is a classical snowbird. Because this bird comes, you would not tell it from this picture, but this bird usually comes to us when 
the winter is coming. And when the snow is here, this bird comes to us. And uh, it, would anyone know what is the name of this bird? That's dark-eyed junco, dark-eyed junco. And very often, I actually hear birds when I go photographing them before I actually see them. You see that they are in some kind of a thicket in a bush. And so first is when you go birding or bird photographing or something like that, just listen for them. That will be the first thing to tell you that there are birds there. And that is the song of dark-eyed junco uh, over here. And in order sometimes to see them, I have with me also something like this. Those are lures. Because birds are just like we are. If they hear something they never heard before, they are curious and they want to see it. So they will come out of, I have here another, lure. And because this is much different from regular singing, even though for you it might sound like a bird, but no, this is not a bird. But they are so curious that they will usually come and have a look. You know, what is this strange sound? And then I can take a picture. Maybe show us another picture of dark-eyed junco. Yeah, it is a dark-eyed junco. And interestingly, this is actually a sparrow. It belongs to a sparrow family. And do you know that there are just house, house sparrows or European house sparrows? You probably know from New York City. But even here in New York City, you can see some other sparrows. And there are something like 20 different sparrows here. And this dark-eyed junco is one of those sparrows and is coming to us from Canada when it becomes really bitterly cold there. They come to us and they winter over here. Just imagine wintering over in New York City. It must be really cold out there uh, in the north. So those are the birds and they chatter. This is supposedly to be a uh, sparrow sound, or for those all different sparrows, or this. They chatter, they come in flocks, and we, I'll be talking about that today, because we will be talking about chirping birds. And interestingly, Hebrew word for some of the birds is derived from exactly this kind of sound chirp, or in Hebrew it'll be tzipor or tzipora, but you can hear in it that sound of chirping, chirp, chirp, or tzip, 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 tzipora is exactly that. So I just wanted to share that with you so that there is something we see in the parks or in the trees and is connecting us with our faith and with the Bible. And we will hear more about it in my sermon. I am looking forward to that. I'll be talking about birds. And uh, that's mostly it for today. Let us give thanks to God for these little fellows which are making our lives. Oh, we have one more picture. You might be s interested. This is dark-eyed junco. And there is one very unique uh, part of that family of juncos. And what do you think is called this one? Yellow-eyed junco. 
You see this yellow eye jungle, and it lives in America only in the southernmost part of Arizona, only, and in the higher mountains over there, and in Mexico then. But there are many, many, many dark eye juncos here, but there are only one species of yellow eyed juncos uh, here, uh, and that is only in the southern, southern Arizona. So let us give now thanks for these little fellows. Gracious God, we are thankful to you for chirping and twittering of birds, waking us up in the morning and surrounding us with their lovely songs and their presence every day. May we be thankful for them and mindful of them, protecting them and enjoying them every day. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is in two segments, both from the book of Exodus. First, I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 2, verses 16 to 22, from the New Revised Standard Version. The, let me take my mask off. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. 
they came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Raoel, he said, how is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, an Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, where is he? Why did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man and he gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah, in marriage. She bore a son and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. The segment, um, segment comes from, also from the book of Exodus, chapter 18, verses one to four. Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people Israel how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. After Moses had sent away his wife Zipporah, his father-in-law Jethro took her back along with their, her two sons. The name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a foreign land. And the name of the other, Eliezer, for he said, the God of my father was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. So, dear friends, we continue our series on the biblical birds. But you might ask, where is a bird in these two readings? And the bird is indeed present there, uh, but it is somehow hidden under the name of Moses' wife. In the English translations, from this earliest times of Genevan Bible, it is transliterated, her name, as Zipporah. And you have it there in a Bible or in the bulletins. And even Jewish translations of the Bible into English use this rendition, and they should know better, I think, because in Hebrew it is not Zipporah, but it's Tsipora, Tsipora, and I was just talking about it with children. That was an onomatopoetic word, which simply means a bird. And of course, I need to explain onomatopoetic. That is that it is a word derived from or mimicking the sound uh, around us. I mentioned it in the Friday message. In Aramaic language, it would be tsipar. In Arabic, it will be utsfur. In Ugaritic, itsaru. In Akkadian, itsuru. Whistling or tweeting will be in Arabic tsafira. And in Akkadian, tsabaru. All these words are interconnected and are associated with that birds making sound like chirping. You have it like sharper into that going into ch instead of ts. But it is the same sound and the same meaning for all these words. The wife of Moses was called a she-bird. It's a female version uh, for the bird. But more specifically, a female songbird just based upon that name. But why? What is the significance? What is the meaning of her name? It had to be somehow important 
She is mentioned in the Bible directly only three times. And always she is named. More prominent characters, more extended characters appearing, uh, especially female characters, remain often nameless. She is named. Sure, she was a wife of Moses, and in the Hebrew Bible you cannot go any <laughs> higher than that. But still, she appears just three times, and all those three times she is named. Was she tiny, petite, like a small bird? providing a contrast of larger-than-life figure of Moses. Then we will have a towering Moses and his wife, Birdie. Or was it for her voice? Mind you, her name was Songbird, derived from tweetering and chirping. So was it again to provide a contrast between the booming revelatory leadership voice of her legendary husband and over against that, that gentle chirping. Was it for contrast? Was it for humorous effect? Or to give us some kind of a family balance? <laughs> The first story in which we meet her is almost an ancient Near East cliché, I would say. It happens at the well where young people hang up, check each other out, meet and bond, and maybe even hedge. And we have a number of examples of that kind in the Bible. Tsipora and her sisters are indeed like a flock of little birds, easily scattered by some local rednecks, those shepherds. But that gives Moses an opportunity to show off, to demonstrate his sense of justice and ability to defend it, to demonstrate that, but also that uh, to show that even though he, this young man, was brought up as an Egyptian aristocrat, he still understands farm work and can do hard work. So that is one example. Tsipra is also like an exotic bird. That background is always kind of highlighted. She was from Midian, and her father Jethro, Reuel, was not just anyone, but a priest from that nation, from that, from that uh, foreign tribe, perhaps. Moses was married to a high-born Midianite bride, we hear from it. That was almost unthinkable in later times. Midianites were biblical archenemies, and there are several reports of genocide against them, you know, divinely sanctioned. <laughs> and it needs to be here, you see, that we need to take Bible with a grain of salt, uh, or more than that, probably a pi pile of salt. Uh, firstly, we see that you know they did not disappear. <laughs> so even though there were at least two reports of genocide against them, uh, they were still there. The other thing is that here we have an Moses' wife, a mother of his children and she is Midianite. Yet Moses had this exotic wife, exactly. And the context of our second reading is illuminating. It goes even further. We could not read the entire chapter, 
you know, because we'll be here for much longer. I, I will summarize it. So uh, after the uh, exodus, um, crossing of the sea, the father-in-law returns to Moses and with him his exotic wife and two sons by that time. And he congratulated him for the victory over the Egyptian army. And while observing how Moses ruled and administered the new Israelite nation, this foreign father-in-law gave to Moses some vital, practical, administrative advice. So not only did Moses have a foreign exotic wife, but the organization and administration of the people of God was derived, was borrowed from this foreign inspiration and foreign influence. And there is a lesson for us, love and pragmatism together exceed xenophobia. And free exotic birds can teach us to open our eyes to broader world and global influences. And it is all right. I said that Sipra is mentioned three times in the Bible. And up till now, we talked only about the first and the last instance. The middle one is probably the strangest and most difficult to interpret or understand, the most enigmatic. Right after Moses met God in the burning bush, and after he was called and sent to Egypt with a mission to liberate his people on his way now back to Egypt, because he is coming from Midianite, that is, that'll be like north-west Saudi Arabia area. He is coming back to Egypt, and on his way back to Egypt is this third story, or in the order of the biblical text, it is the middle one, where the uh, Tsipra is mentioned. And it is from Exodus chapter 4, verses 24 through 26. And I'll read it uh, again, mostly from New Revised Standard Version with small changes. On the way, at a place where they spend the night, they are returning back to Egypt, the Lord met him, understand Moses, and tried to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched his feet with it and said, truly you are my, a bridegroom of blood to me, so let him alone. It was then said, a bridegroom of blood by circumcision. That's the reading. I told you it's enigmatic, it's strange. No one really knows, even if you read the theological treaties and commentaries and so on, they are kind of pulling their hair and they are saying, oh, this is this theory, that's that theory. What is it? What is this? What does it even mean? No one really knows. There are many different theories. For me, it is like watching birds, frankly. Here, Tsipra is, or you know, her connection with this text is true to that. Because birds also offer to us a window to a very distant past. It is known, and I think that you might have heard that also, that birds are our current dinosaurs. You know, if you see a bird, you are seeing a minuscule flying dinosaur based upon anatomy and physiology and probably even colors and maybe songs. Who knows? We, the, the, those are not recording. But um, dinosaurs, we know, at least some of them, had feathers. So if you see the bird, you see the current 
minuscule dinosaur. And it is a window into a deep past. And this, in a similar way, this story, which is in front of us, as enigmatic and problematic and dark as it is, this bizarre, strange text is like that, a window into a very distant, this time religious past, when God acted like a dark demon. That's present in the Bible. God is there not just an all-loving, but in that case, it is like God being after Moses. <laughs> Maybe preparing him, you know, it'll, it'll, it will not be a stroll in a park, what you are starting to do. And that's one of the ways of people are trying to interpret that. And when uh, circumcision was an obscure marriage ritual, think about it, not yet lifted to prominence as an embodiment of a religious identity of Jewish people and their exclusivity. I did a podcast about it last week with Peter Rinaldi, and you can go and listen over there. Uh, you know, it'll be another sermon. <laughs> so uh, I, I just want to highlight this. So this is the story of Tzipporah, a legendary wife of Moses whose name means she bird or she songbird. And like birds, she opens for us, the window to extreme old past. She also opens our eyes and minds to wide horizons of distant places and cultures. She is shy and brave at the same time, soft yet melodiously spoken, small but powerful, and in fact, great only three times mentioned in the legends of Moses, but essential, just like the birds are essential in our world. And now I would like to invite you to uh, our prayer response. So, Please read with me. God of warbler and a puffin, of koala and panda, of moose and squirrel, of tiger and butterfly, God of pansy and daffodil, apple tree and redwood, of mountain meadows and rainforest jungles. We are in awe of all you have done. You created a world of plants and animals that can live in such wondrous harmony. Guide us so that we live in your world in the harmony you intended. Amen.
Now I'd like to speak of presentation of the tithes and offerings. If you would like to make a contribution to Rutgers Presbyterian Church, please consider mailing a check to into the church office. Or if you prefer to pay online, please consult the instructions found in our weekly emails or PDF of the bulletin. If you are worshiping in the sanctuary, there is an offering box in the narthex. <laughs> As part of creation's endless song of praise, may these offerings, O oh God, express our joy and hope for the living. Receive us and use us in the ways of your generous love. Amen. And now we proceed to time of intercessions, of sharing of joys and concerns. And uh, I will pull here a microphone. And I should probably, when I am going to you, I'll wear the mask. Um, if you have, uh, do you have? joys and concerns you would like to share. Oh, I'll go back and go for forward. Carl. I'd like to ask for prayers for my parents, Donald and Verna, who will be soon going through a major transition in their living situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Prayers for all those who are um, voting on Tuesday in the uh, August primary. Um. Yep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And in thanksgiving that we have democratic system where we can vote, hear our prayers. Are there any other over here? I will try to go to check whether we have there any message. There is a request from Karen. Uh, pray for those who are suffering from or fear of monkeypox. He asked for wisdom and guidance for the scientists and government people who can facilitate the vaccine and distribution of the same. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we continue our prayers lifting up uh, our thanks for the gift of air, home uh, to dragonfly and sparrow and dark-eyed junco, made oxygen rich by tall standing trees necessary for our breathing. God in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. For the gift of water, home to plankton and trout, 
sculpting valleys and coastlines necessary for life. God, in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. For the gift of plants, home to caterpillar and koala, recycling into rich soil necessary for food. God, in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. Where these gifts are harmed by debris and pollution, by climate change, by destruction of habitat, by corruption and human greed, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Where these gifts are harmed and decisions are needed from all with power to make new choices, God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We also pray for those whom you entrusted into our love and care, into our circles of friends and family. And so we pray for those who lost a loved one, parent or child, partner or friend. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For those who are ill or are recovering from an illness, for those facing serious medical decisions and treatments. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For the gift of interdependence woven into every part of creation, telling us we cannot live alone, away from all with whom we share this earth. God, in thanksgiving, and in your mercy, hear our prayers. Now, dear Lord, please hear our quiet prayers we offer for all those who are on our minds and on our hearts. God, in your mercy and in thanksgiving, hear our prayers. And together we now say the prayer we learn from Jesus Christ. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. May the hallowing of your name echo throughout the universe. May the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. May your heavenly will be done by all created beings, and may your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials that are too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory and the power that is love, now and forever. Amen.
Dear friends, whenever you feel like a little bird, remember Zipra or Zipra, that little but brave wife of Moses. And look around for her representation around us and take that into your heart. And now let us hear and appropriate. Like, let us take within us and with us into the world divine blessing, encouragement, and strengthening to our daily lives. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. The Lord shower you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Amen.